So, enjoy the audience. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening or good afternoon. So my name is Ralph Benton. I'm the Chief Security and Information Security Officer of Chipstead. And uh, I don't know, there's a lot of Swedes in here. Do you know what Chipstead is all about? Good, at least one raised their hand, good. Uh, probably most of you are uh, customers. Uh, but if I name, mention Chipstead in Norway, everybody knows. So basically, Chipstead is a media company, owns Aftonbladet, Svenska Dagbladet, Blocket, Lendo, and so on. Then you know. So whenever people ask, <coughs> who do you work for? I say, Chipstead, and they go, hmm? what is that? And I say, Aftonbladet. Oh, okay, I know. So basically, that's why I wanted to share. So setting the scene, I'm a little bit uh, short of time, so I'll get on to it right away. So Chipstead is, as I said, uh, a number of brands uh, in the area of marketplaces, in media, and also in a lot of uh, upcoming companies where we do investments. But our mission is to empower people in their daily lives. That's our mission. And as I said, it's a lot of companies, which is also, of course, challenging from a security point of view. Uh, we are a Nordic company, so we are present in all Nordic com countries, except for Iceland, if you count that as Nordic. Uh, but we are in Sweden, Norway, Finland, and Denmark. As I said, we are divided into, actually it's three business areas. The last, the one at bottom here are now joined. But we have the marketplaces where we are number one in, in both Norway, Sweden and Finland and Denmark. And the media, I would say we are number one by far with the uh, Aftonbladet and Svenska Dagbladet in Sweden and uh, uh, seven newspapers in Norway. And then we have the financial services and the ventures, uh, which are some of them you probably know. Uh, Prisjakt is pretty famous. Uh, Mindler had a big, big boom during Corona with a psychologist uh, online. Uh, investment just before Corona. Very good investment, I must say. 400% increase during Corona, something like that. Pretty good. Uh, so, summarizing, 60 plus brands, 6,000, 7,000 people, 1 billion monthly visits on our sites. And that's the number I want you to keep in mind when I, for the rest of the talk here. So one billion monthly visits on our websites. That's where we make our money. Uh, and then, of course, we make some money as well. Could make more, of course, apparently. The stake, the <coughs> share went down pretty bad yesterday, uh, unfortunately. But uh, as I said, we are located in, in the Nordics. Uh, we also have people in, Nor in Poland. A lot of our developers are down there. I'll come back to the developer part soon. Uh, we also have, uh, with Lendo, expanding beyond the Nordics. We actually have them in Austria and in uh, Spain and so on. Right, that was Shipstead. Now you know everything about Shipstead, at least what you need to know for this talk. So why I'm ha standing here is really because we have been running a cybersecurity program. We have addressed quite a few of those things that Ian from uh, Arctic Wolf mentioned. And I will come back to that. I really enjoyed that speak. Thank you, Ian. Um, we have addressed that in, in our way of doing it. And I will share you the way we were thinking through this. Uh, and um, hopefully I can give you some takeaways. It all started back in 2019, where I was assigned or hired or recruited or whatever you call it <clears throat> as the CISO. And uh, my background is uh, 20 years plus in information IT security. I worked 16 years for Sandvik, if you know that Swedish company. Uh, and then I spent two years at uh, Karolinska University Hospital as the information IT security manager. And then I was recruited to Shipstead with a very, very clear assignment. And this is, I think, is very important. And I think Ian actually mentioned that through from the first day or even before I started, I had the board of directors, I had the top management supporting this. And I think that's pretty important. They gave me three things to work on for the first four months. 
Current cybersecurity posture. Where are we from a cybersecurity point of view? The second question was, where, do we, where should we be? And how do we get there? Basically, those three questions. Pretty tough, I would say, coming into a new organization. But on the other hand, the way I looked at it was excellent. I need to get to know this organization. I need to understand everything. And I need to understand where we need to be. And as I said, exactly four months, because I knew on October, October 20, uh, 24th of uh, 2019, I was going to stand in front of the board in Oslo and explain this. And I did. So, how, what do you do when you, when you get this kind of assignment? Yeah, frameworks. Uh, I think Ian mentioned that as well. Um, I picked NIST, the NIST cybersecurity framework. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, I'm very familiar with ISO. I'm also very familiar with, with um, uh, what was I thinking about? The standard of good practice, the ISF organization because Sandvik has been part of that organization for many years and so on when I was working there. But anyway, uh, we were not part of ISF at that time. We are now, so I can recommend you to become part members of ISF. Uh, but at that, this point in 2019, we needed to have a framework, and I needed to have a framework where I could explain to the top management and to the board of directors what this is all about, because they think this is a pretty complex area. And it is, right? But you need to explain it in a simple way. So I picked this. Uh, you have the identify, of course. Then you have protect, detect, respond, and recover. And those, if you stay on those, on that level, that's why I spotlighted that one and not the rest. Because the rest is for me and my team. Those were the top things I focused on for the board of director and top management. And what I did, I took a self-assessment tool, Google Sheet <laughs> or Excel, and I reached out to, I think I started off with 11 brands or group functions, and I forced them together with me and my team to answer these questions. And this is the result, this is actually the result. And I got the clearance from my manager to show this to you guys. This is the actual result. So in 2019, you see the red. That's where we assessed ourselves to be. So what is the green one? It is the goal. So based on the NIST self-assessment, we talk to the top management to understand where is the risk appetite when it comes to cybersecurity. And what is this one, two, three, four scale? It is the tiers of NIST cyber security framework. So it, within that framework, if you don't know it, there are tier levels. And we just use them, right or wrong, we use them as maturity levels. So basically, they, they, they assess themselves, where are we between zero to four? And as it says here, you have if you're on level one, you're partial implementation, very much ad hoc, I would say. If you are two, you're on two, you are risk informed, which means you do security with risk-based security, I would say. Uh, third is repeatable, and then four is adaptive. And adaptive, that's that's really where you can, you have all the tools, you have the processes, you can really almost perceive what, what's coming next and you are prepared for whatever's around the corner. And in that discussion with the top management, we ended up in 2019 that our goal would be level three. We should be repeatable on all five areas. Could I ask somebody to get me a glass of water? I'm a little bit dry, so thanks. Um, so this, this is what we did. This was the result. So I went to the board and said, this is where we are. We believe we need to be there. Do you approve? Yes, we approve. Okay, this will cost you roughly this amount of money. It will take you roughly this time. Do you approve? Yes, we approve. So that's, that's how simple it was. 
it was a lot of work. To explain to the board, thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> Vodka, that's good. I like that. Uh, it'd be fun. So <clears throat> it wasn't that easy. I needed to explain a little bit more than just say, okay, we need this uh, lot of money and we needed this time and so on. I needed to explain what are we going to achieve. So I created this. And funny enough, this is our strategy. It's a one slide strategy for three years. And I'm pretty impressed by this one. Uh, I stole it. I'm, very, I'm a musician. I know how to steal good stuff and use it in another way. I stole this one from another company. But I made it our uh, by saying, this is the mission, enable Shipstead to reach maturity level three in all five categories of the NIST cybersecurity framework. We do this by identifying the control uh, in the identify area, have control over our assets and monitor risks, right? Protect, we make sure that we have adequate security in place, company-wide, very important. And we have policies, the security policy applied in all our products and application, etc. We focus on detect and respond. And actually, we did that from the very beginning. We focused mu very much on detect and respond. We need to be able to detect uh, the breaches and attacks that could appear. And we need to understand our risks as well to detect them so and then respond to them and i think that's that's really where you should start if you do the work we have been doing and then recover and that is an area where we need to improve even further i'll come back to that so a three-year cybersecurity program we did more than 35 projects. I think that's, I, I, I lowered the number to be honest. It was closer to 50. So we've been running a huge change program in the company. But it depends on what you, what you put into the word projects or initiatives. But in general, we did a lot of projects and all of it was making this huge change. And we did it by, the structure of creating one stream called infrastructure, another one called application, the third one called operation, and the last one was change management stream. The way we set it up was in these streams, we had a project manager, we had one of my team members who was the owner of the stream, also the expert in one of these areas. And the way we did this is really in the stream of infrastructure, it was about the EDR. It was about, uh, yeah, securing the network, the clients, and so on. In the application stream, it was about uh, making sure that we secure our products. We did, with the code, with the scanners, external scanners, and using the capabilities in the different cloud environments that we are using a lot. One of the first things we set up was a SOC, 24 seven operation, and uh, also securing our email. We did that within the first year. And the last uh, stream is the change management stream, which is all the soft part, I call it. We have awareness, we have phishing simulations, risk management, I'll come back to that, but also how we identify incidents like uh, Matthias talked about before here from MSP. We follow our incidents very, very closely and report on them. Just to share with you, um, one thing that came to our mind after about one year into the program is how hard it is to communicate to an organization and to actually make a change. And I think I need to give credits to the financial guys. They were running a project and they made a promotion video. And I said to my <laughs> communication responsible in the programs, like, I want one of those. So she did it. Here it is. Hopefully you get some... No? Is there any sound here? No? Oh, I should have tested this before, shouldn't I? <laughs> That's a good idea. Where do I change it? Anybody knows? No? 
typically. And now he installed funny stuff on my computer. You will go. Yeah, I will start from the beginning. I, I want to share this because I think this is uh, is pretty good. Are you okay? Should we go? Hopefully. No. Nope. All over the world. It is vital for modern organization success, especially those who deal with sensitive information. At Schutzke, we take our responsibility on protecting our systems, networks, employees, and our customers' information very seriously. The main security threats for our organization are having our customer information stolen, having our digital marketplaces disrupted, having our news sites made unavailable or not trustworthy by manipulating content. To ensure the right level of protection across our business, since 2020, we run a cybersecurity program at Shipstead that leads our organization to a proactive security culture. That means enabling all brands and central functions to improve their cybersecurity capabilities. We do this by addressing the five core areas of cybersecurity, which means our ability to identify assets, people, risks, and threats, protect our assets, people, and data, detect vulnerabilities, breaches, or attacks, respond to cybersecurity incidents, and recover from them. Within the cybersecurity program, we have so far been able to significantly improve the protection and monitoring of our equipment and products, install a 24-7 security surveillance and incident response process, promote mandatory awareness and phishing trainings to all employees, and we will keep doing a lot more as we become an organization where every employee is committed to protect themselves, their colleagues, and the organization. Follow us to know how. You heard some? All right, good. Uh, so coming back to what Ian said, I think this is about creating culture, right? And this <coughs> video <coughs> has been very, very useful. Very useful. Whenever we talk about security in ships that we start off with this video. And everybody knows it almost by heart now, right? And it's a very easy way to explain these are the threats for our business. People, they can rely to this, right? In their in their normal work. And also connect to what Ian said. It's about them, right? It's about them. They take the responsibility to protect themselves and their colleague. And by that, they will protect the company. Recommend that. That was uh, quite a lot of money I put into that one, but it was worth it, even if it was only for two minutes. <laughs> a lot of money, but it was really worth it. Uh, no, this doesn't work instead. Yeah, good. There we go. So how did we organize this? We did it uh, through, through using the existing model. And this is the the pyramid we always talk about in ships that, that we have a purpose. You remember what we, the mission was, like right? empowering people in the daily life. That's our purpose. We may, must make sure that the newspaper comes out, uh, the news comes out, maybe not newspapers specifically, but the news comes out in one way or another, and it must be trustworthy and so on. But then we have the brands and the businesses, and then we have the foundation, and the foundation is us in central functions. So what, what we built this program on was existing uh, forums. So when the program is closed, which it was two weeks ago, we still have the same organization in place. So we use the data security forum where you have representatives from Lendo, Aftomladet, Blocket, uh, yeah, everyone. We use that as this operations steering committee because they were making sure that things happen when we decided something in the program they made sure it happened out in the business that forum existed before the program and it will continue to exist because we need to work further on this uh, ctos is always good to have because they normally sign off on the money side and yes we had an approval from the board this is the much how much you can spend on this program 
But as my team always, or we always struggled in the discussion, I tried to explain to them, I didn't get the money. I always had to go to get the approval. I didn't get the money, if you understand what I mean. So I had to go to the CTOs and get a sign off. But it was pretty easy when it was in line with what we set up for the board of directors back in 2019. So this is how we structure it. And my, my takeaway on this one is you should always also report to the board of directors. So keep them in the loop and the top management. And I'll come back to that. Exactly. Next slide. Uh, this is the report. The report I send to them every second month. And during or during Ukraine war in the start of it, I actually did it every month. Uh, this is fake because I can't show you where our risks are. But it, these are the risks. So basically, these were the four risks that we interpret our mission with the program. One of the board of directors, he's very much into risk management. He said, I see, this is what you want to achieve. Could you turn them around to risks and then we can follow it? Basically, that's what he said. And that's what I did. So the first risk, number one, is about insufficient asset management. The second one is the capability to repeatedly detect and respond to breaches and attacks. Third one is about uh, capability to detect threats and vulnerabilities. And last, the uh, insufficient security culture, coming back to the people. So these risks we followed. And people who knows me, they know I don't take risk uh, management. <laughs> I take that very seriously. So I said to them, if you want me to report a risk, these ones will go up and down because they are affected by the outside world. So you can't take that as, as a failure of the program is suddenly one risk goes up because that's probably something in the world outside that affected it. So even if we do stuff, the risk can still go up. And they've been going up and down, but we are all, always had some kind of explanation for it, why that happened. Then I have the top part there where we talk about what's going on, what are the concerns, what, what has changed from the threat landscape, the outside world, and do we have any new security concerns that we need to, to make them aware of? And last but not least, coming back to what Matthias was talking about, we did report and we do report still on all the incidents that we, uh, that we register and manage. And uh, we do it simple, non-attacks and attacks. What is that? So <laughs> I have a similar sort of challenge as Matthias. Non-attack is means misconfiguration, poor patch management, human error, et cetera, et cetera. We make it pretty simple. An attack is basically somebody who tried to do something malicious. And as you can see, this is also fake numbers, but it's not completely off what we actually experience. We are around, today, I think we're around about 20 a month major incidents that we handle. So that's the way we've been reporting it, and we've been reporting it every second month, but it hasn't been me. It's been actually the CEO, Christine Skogenlund. She reports this to the board every second month. I'll do the slide, I do the slide, I send it to her, and uh, she asks me some questions, and then she takes it to the board. And I think that's really, really good. It shows the board that the CEO takes this seriously, and it makes her very much aware of cybersecurity. So first I was expecting to be called into Oslo every second month, but this has been really, really good. So we talk and we go through this and then she reported to the board. So what happened? Yeah, this is the development. And this is where we were in January. So this is what I reported to the, to the steering committee. By the way, I forgot to say that, but the steering committee is actually the top management, the executives, except for the CEO and the HR. I don't know why, but somebody said they don't need to be there. Uh, so this is what I reported to the, to the executives on yeah, 8th of March, and it was, it was approved to close the program because we didn't reach maybe everything, but it was good enough. 
Am I out of time now? Close? So, let's skip the next steps. Let's talk about the takeaways. Or, no, I was a little bit quick. Let's go back. This is to improve. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed myself by the, if you look at this number here, overall, we managed to increase 49% better. And I think that's a pretty good uh, result. And the takeaways, keep it simple. I know I've taken a lot of short turns. I think probably most of you can shoot me down and say, oh, you can't think, ah, come on, risk management, you have to have that, blah, blah, blah. This is making it simple and to be able to communicate to the executives on the right level. And involve them, put them on the steering committee of the program. God damn it. If you want this to happen, you take the responsibility and you make them aware, right? Because they need to take decision. I have a great opportunity to talk cybersecurity with them at the steering committee meeting. Of course, always involve people, process, and technology. Make sure that you always involve that. Report on the development on a regular basis. I did it on every second month. Whatever suits you, but do it regularly. And be prepared for changes. We got hit by COVID first, and then we got hit by cost savings. So you have to prepare. There will be changes through these three years. And... Last but not least, celebrate. This is my team. Mohammed is actually here somewhere. There you are. Eh? This is us two weeks ago. Uh, within the data and tech uh, organization in Chips that we had an award in Oslo, and we were nominated by colleagues as the team for Accelerate. Accelerate meaning making a change in a fast way. And we won. Thanks to the program. So, it's a team effort, but you really need to have a game plan and stick to the game plan and make it simple. That's really the message. Here we go. Thank you very much.